two by four. A two by one and a one by four gave you a two by four. So just keep your same pattern. This is a row. Five is a row. Six is a row. It's got to go through this column, this column, this column, this column. There's your column. There's your four columns. Sometimes if you get through the whole thing and you didn't break it up, another way to do it is count how many entries you have. One, two, three, four, and you need four columns. Divide that by four. That's how many is in each column. So if you had 12 of them and you needed three columns, divide it by three, and four of them you're going to add together to combine to one. If you don't put the little dividers down. And again, you can check this on your couch, but I want you to know how to do the multiply out. Is that good? Question? All right, let's try to get matrices. I'm going to need to check the door for you. I love that activity down You got your way with the cafeteria. I heard you just said that. Yes. They moved the cafeteria entrance. Okay, now, a matrix, when we make a matrix, we use the brackets like this to denote a matrix. When we use a matrix, but we want to find the determinant of the matrix, we use solid brackets, just straight lines like this. This means we're still working with the matrix, but we want to work with the determinant of the matrix. Okay. The determinant is a real number that is associated with a square matrix. A, a matrix has to be square. It's 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4 in order for us to get a determinant. And it's a number that we use to, again, I told you, if we're going to do the area, we'll do the area of a triangle, we'll use the determinant of a matrix. Um, Kramer's rule that we really don't do, but we do in the honors, uses a determinant and then a series of little ratios to solve a solution to the equation. So there's many uses <coughs> for a determinant of a matrix. But we're going to just stick with a real, real basic one, just so that I can introduce it to you and you know what a, a, a determinant is. Now, to find your determinant, and the only one that I need you to find by hand, is a 2 by 2. Anything more than that, we're going to use the calculator. Sometimes in college, you are asked to find the determinant of a 3 by 3, so a little bit more involved. But a 2 by 2 works like this. Make arrows to go up like this. And multiply these up, up. They have to come up, not down. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times a negative 3 is a negative 3. And you're going to subtract in the middle. So bring your product up, not down. Bring them up. And then you're going to subtract in the middle. So your determinant of this is going to be 4 minus a negative 3 will be positive 7. And your calculator does a determinant for you, too. I need you to know how to do the two ones. Like Go to that's it. One. That's it. That's how simple it is. If we go to your calculator and build a matrix, we're going to build a two by two. God bless you. It's two, negative three, and one, two. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know. Again, you're going to quit. But when you go to your matrix, and you go to math, scroll to math, you're looking for that one, determinant, D-E-T. You're sitting right on it. You come here, you do the same thing that we did for the other one, click on the matrix letter that you use, if it goes through. My matrix is not through for some reason. Click on A. And you get seven. Yeah. You can always put this in your calculator. It has to be square. If it's not square, it's going to tell you. I forget if it says undefined or mismatched or non-square. I forget what the, the problem is, it, what it says. But if you forget how to do this by hand, and you at least know to bring these pieces up, when you look in your calculator and you get the answer, can you kind of work it backwards to see that you subtracted and not added? I said, you have to show me work for a 2 by 2 Can you put it in your calculator? 
Once you see the 4 and the negative 3, you'll know that you can't add them to get 7. You'll subtract them. So if you forget the rules, your calculator is there to help you. I just want you to be aware that we find determinants. And for any other matrix that we have, again, we use this straight bracket instead of the, you know, the, the other bracket. This is for a matrix. This is also a matrix, but this tells us we want the determinant. Okay, you can put that in your calculator. This is a 3 by 3 do determinant, and it comes out with your one number determinant. Okay. Um, one of the uses we have for determinant is the area of a triangle. When we find the area of a triangle, we have a little formula that uses the determinant. A triangle in, um, on a coordinate plane with an xy point. If we gave you three xy points and you plotted them and you had to find your area, you would probably have to make a perpendicular line to the base, right? You have to find the height of something. You have to find the length of the base. You have to find the length of the perpendicular line. You have to find the slope of one line to find the perpendicular line to it. It's a long time to get there to, to, to do that. So what we do is we have a nice little formula that uses the coordinates of your triangle. And we build a matrix. Now the problem is, you have three points to your triangle. When you lay this out, you only get a three by two. So we fill the right-hand column with one. You can't take a determinant of a three by two. So the rule is, fill the right-hand column with one. Now we have a three by three. Notice this area formula says plus or minus one half the determinant. What happens sometimes your determinant comes out negative. Well, your area can never be negative, right? Your area always has to be positive. So if your if your determinant came out negative, then you would use the formula with a negative for the negative of your determinant. <coughs> God bless you. God bless you. If it comes out positive, then you use the one half of say whatever my determinant happens to be. So that one half, that plus or minus is there just so that your area always stays positive. <laughs> God bless you. So let's give this a try. Look, tough morning, huh? Because it's raining. Now, if I just briefly plot this point, one zero, two two, four three. Here's my triangle. I need to find the area of this picture a triangle somewhere. I need to find the area of this triangle. I have to find the slope of this line. I have to drop a perpendicular line. I have to use my distance formula. Then I have to do one half base times height because it's not falling in a nice place. <coughs> so instead, I build a matrix. One zero, two two, four three. I'm going to take its determinant but I need to make this a square. Instead of being 3 by 2, it's got to be 3 by 3. So put 1. You fill 1 down the right-hand side. Let's out your point. 1, 0, 2, 2, 4, 3. And now find me the determinant. Plug it in your cup and find me the determinant. Negative three. Oops. Okay, there's a little bit spread out like that. So it looks like a triangle. Did everybody get negative three? Everybody can find it. So because this determinant came out negative, you're going to use the negative one half and multiply it by negative 3. You need your area to come out positive. So the area of this triangle, if we did all that work, found the perpendicular to make the height, found the distance for the base, found the distance for the height, and took 1 half base times height, would come out to be 3 half. Okay. Much, much easier way, isn't it? So the determinant has a lot of uses for it. We're just seeing like really one of the many, many uses. 
if you know you go on to calculus and other things, you'll do more with the determinant. Um, this is really so we introduce the determinant to you and you get a good understanding of it. And basically, that's your determinant. Thank <laughs> you.